image. Then go ahead and start cloning out the rock. Um, clone the edges. Try to see if you can match the edges so that they look somewhat uh, seamless. That they look like they are part of the original image. And if you do this right, you're going to be able to cover up and hide all the edges and create one beautiful seamless texture. So this is my finished texture after hiding the edge. And you know what? It's pretty freaking easy. So uh, just go ahead and save this file into your uh, file folder. Then go to File, Add New Material, and inside the color we're going to go to Load Image, and then we're going to apply that texture, that rocky moss texture that we just created. I would also suggest turning your sampling to alias 1. That way you get a really nice sharp image rather than the kind of a low res fuzzy image that you get with a normal rendering. Then take that rock texture and put it onto your rocks. So a quick render and this is what your rock looks like. Now it's good, but it's not good enough. So let's go a little further. Go to your bump channel and in texture go to noise and in your noise we're going to add we're going to add the poxo texture now this kind of gives us a cool kind of rockish feel we'll set it to 300 percent we'll also bump up our strength of our bump to about 45 percent as well then in our basic tab we're going to turn on displacement go to a noise and for the noise channel, we're going to choose Poxo as well, and we will set that global scale to 200%. We'll set the strength to about 40 and turn on subpolygonal displacement. Also set the height of your displacement to about 10. And this is a quick render of what your rock will look like with these settings. Now let's go ahead and take that material and we're going to put that on our rock face. Now if we render this real quick you'll notice that it distorts because it's uh, it's not scaled properly. So, so to fix this create a new texture. Actually copy the same exact texture for the rock and we're going to use this for the mountain ridge. Click on the texture tag near your extrude and we're just going to adjust the length of the X value until the uh, image map uh, comes out looking properly mm, properly that's not even a fucking word um, sorry guys so uh, there's one little change that I made that uh, I'm gonna highlight real quick I adjusted my texture my displacement um, I set it to nutus n-u-t-o-u-s nutus however you want to say it and I set the relative scale on the Y to 760 some percent so it's got this kind of vertical uh, uh, cavernous feel to it and uh, that was the only thing I changed from the poxo texture now if you followed pretty closely throughout this tutorial your uh, image should render out and look something kinda like this now to get it from that previous to this current image we need to add a little bit of randomness a little bit of fun to this entire scene with the foam in the water and also with some of the green in the rock and to do this we're going to use a vector map and we are going to layer some uh, different noise patterns on top of it with that select your plane polygon and press C that's going to turn this into an editable polygon uh, you also notice that the uh, plane turned into a triangle. Now, when you select the plane, go to Brush, and inside Brush and Mode, choose Paint. Now, when you start doing this, I click on Surface and adjust. Uh, I adjusted my radius to be kind of small, um, and then go ahead and just start painting around the areas near the rock. Now what this generally is used for is to weight objects but since we're painting this this is going to give us a 1 and a 0 um, and uh, we can take those values and use those as a mask. 
Now I jumped ahead a little bit, but you could see that everywhere that the ocean water is going to touch, that's going to cause a foam, I am painting that area. Next we're going to go into our ocean texture, go to the color, into the layer palette, and add in a new noise channel. For this noise channel, go inside and we're going to choose... We're going to choose Luca, and we're going to set the colors to kind of match a sea foamish kind of look. So for the darker color, I'm going to choose a bluish grayish kind of color. Then in Shader, we're going to go to Effects and Vertex Map. Now go ahead and click on that white square, that color square, and click your vertex map on your plane and drop it into the vertex map tab. Now take your vertex map and move it underneath your noise and set it to layer mask. Now you're not going to be able to see anything but when you do finally render this out ta-da! your map is there. Now it really doesn't pop so we're going to copy our noise channel by right clicking and copying on it. Going to bump and we're going to click shader, go ahead and pick color, then right click and paste the channel onto it. Then we're going to add a um, vertex map through the effects. In the same technique, we're going to drop this vertex map down below, switch it, and then set it to layer mask. That way our foam is going to bump when the foam shows up as well. Another thing we're going to do is click on the luminance channel. And inside the luminance channel, we're going to go ahead and set it to layer. And inside layer, we're going to add the color and paste in that same exact noise that we had earlier. We're also going to go to effects, vertex map, drop our vertex map into there. And then do the exact same thing with the layer mask but lower the brightness of the luminance. We don't need the foam to necessarily glow, but we do want the foam to pop out from the rest of the seat. And if you're still with me, here's what the luminance on the foam will look like. Now we're going to do kind of a similar thing with our rock wall because we want to add some moss and add some uh, irregularities to the bottom of it to where it shows that it's soaked on the bottom of the uh, uh, rock face, but not necessarily. It looks drier on the top. So we're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to go to brush. We're going to uh, set it to paint mode. And we are going to paint some weights at the bottom of the rock face. Moving ahead a little bit, you could see that I painted the rock face, but I'm going to change the name of this vertex map from what it's called to lower wet part of the mountain. So with this rock ridge texture, we're going to set this to layer. Now we're going to right click on bitmap, copy this channel, and we're going to create a duplicate version of this color channel by pasting it onto another layer channel. Then in shader go to effects and vertex map and drop in your vertex map and uh, then we're also going to lower it uh, or set it below the second bitmap and set that part to layer mask. And then in the top version of the rock texture we're going to adjust the brightness of it. So set your set your black point up to let's say, I don't know, 0.3 or so. This is going to make your rock look wet at the bottom. Then we're going to pick our extrude NURB again. We're going to select our paintbrush, choose paint, and we're going to paint a couple of these vertex points all along this mountain ridge. With that done, go into your Mountain Ridge Color Layer section, add a new noise channel, and inside the noise, I want you to choose Poxo. It's a very good ground material. We're going to change the colors on it, though. So the light part of the colors, I'm going to pull from my image, and it's going to be a bright green, or a kind of a greenish color, and also...